All right, you guys, let's look at some algebraic interpretations of vectors, okay? So this definition here tells us that the magnitude and the direction angle of a vector, AB. So it says that the magnitude or the length of a vector, U, AB is given by absolute value of U, all right? So I want you guys to be careful. This vector sits inside of these absolute value bars. But this absolute value bars when we're talking about vectors does not mean absolute. It means the square root of your horizontal component squared plus your vertical component squared. So be careful. Anytime you see these absolute value bars, it is talking about magnitude. Okay. All right. So that's how we will calculate magnitude. And if we are asked to calculate the direction angle, it says the direction angle theta satisfies tangent theta equals b over a where a does not equal zero, and we usually choose theta such that theta falls in between zero and 360 degrees, okay? So let's practice. So this problem says find the magnitude and the direction angle for the vector that has horizontal and vertical components three, negative two, okay? So let's write our formulas here so that we have them. So magnitude, okay, if we have a vector u, Magnitude can be found by the square root of a squared plus b squared, okay? And if we are asked to find the direction angle, we were told that tangent theta equals b over a, okay? So let's plug in the information that we have. All right, so they gave us our vector. So this three is our horizontal component, and this two is our vertical component. So let's find the magnitude first. So that would equal the square root of three squared plus negative two squared. Three squared is nine and negative two squared is four. And we would combine what's underneath the radical to get the square root of 13. So the square root of 13 doesn't break down any farther, it doesn't simplify. So we can leave this as our magnitude, okay? Now let's look for our direction angle. So the formula for our direction angle says tangent theta equals b over a. Well, we know what b over a is. It's our horizontal and vertical component. So that's going to be negative 2 over 3. And we're solving for theta. So the only way to get theta out of there is to use the inverse. Okay. So we can plug this into our calculator. Make sure that you're in degrees when you do it. So when you plug that into the calculator, you get inverse tangent of negative two over three, and that gives you negative 33.69, okay? Now what's important about our direction angle, okay? Our direction angle has to be between zero and 360 degrees, okay? So when we get this negative angle, okay, we have to correct it because it has to fall into the range that they told us. So we're going to find its coterminal angle, and you guys know coterminal angles differ by 360 degrees. So this answer that the calculator gave me, I added 360 degrees to it, and I get this one, 326.31. That is the measurement that I'm gonna use for my direction angle because it is an angle that falls between zero and 360. So just be careful, your direction angle has to fall in that range. So we found our magnitude, and we also found our direction angle. Cool. All right, let's practice that some more. Okay. Now, in the previous question, okay, they gave me my horizontal and vertical components. Now, sometimes they won't, and you'll have to find them on your own. So let's figure out how to do that. So it says the horizontal and vertical components, respectively, of a vector u having magnitude u and direction angle theta are given by. So if I want to find the horizontal component, I will use this formula. A equals the magnitude of my vector times cosine of my direction angle. And if I'm asked to find my vertical component, B is equal to the magnitude of my vector times the sine of the direction angle. So now we have another way that we can represent our vector. We can either use bold face, we can use the horizontal and vertical component or the formula for each of them, okay? So let's practice that. All right, so it says from the figure, 
Vector W has a magnitude of 25 and a direction angle of 41.7 degrees. Find the horizontal and vertical components, okay? So let's write our formulas so that we have them. So for our horizontal component, okay, we were told that A equals the magnitude of our vector, which I'll use W since it's our vector name, times the cosine of the direction angle. And our vertical component is going to be the magnitude of our vector times the sine of our direction angle, okay? So let's plug those values in based on this. So on this picture, we can see that the magnitude is 25, okay? And our direction angle is 41.7, okay? So I'm going to find my horizontal component. So that's going to be A equals the magnitude, which is 25, times the cosine of 41.7 degrees, and my vertical component is gonna be 25 times the sine of 41.7 degrees, okay? Now to figure out what those are, I'm gonna plug those into the calculator. Make sure that you're in degrees. So for my horizontal component, I end up getting 18.67, and for my vertical component, I end up getting 16.63, okay? So if they wanted me to write them in the correct form, I would write them with our squinted parentheses, 18.67, 16.63. Cool, so easy peasy. All right, let's try that again on some other vectors, okay? Now this time, they gave us this figure, Okay. And they want us to find the magnitude and the, 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 no, they want us to find, sorry, they want us to find the vertical and the horizontal components for each of the vectors in the figure. Okay. So as you're looking at this figure, if they give you another one like it, the colors go with the same vector. So for example, if I'm looking at vector U, okay, its magnitude is five and its direction angle is 60. So the colors align. Okay. So your formula for the horizontal component is still A equals the magnitude of your vector times the cosine of the direction angle, and B equals your magnitude times the sine of your direction angle. So if I'm doing the information for you, from my diagram, I can see that the magnitude for you is 5, and I can see that the direction angle for you is 60 degrees. So if I'm plugging both of those values into both the horizontal and vertical component formulas, okay, then the cosine of 60 is a half, 5 times a half is 5 over 2, that's my horizontal component. And then for my vertical component, the sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, and then when I multiply, I get 5 square root of 3 over 2. So I put them in their horizontal and vertical component form. Okay, now this one you'll notice that I didn't plug it into a calculator. I didn't plug it into a calculator because 60 is one of our angles off the unit circle. So more than likely if they give you an angle off the unit circle, they're going to want you to leave it in its exact form, which is why I didn't punch this into a calculator and that's why radical is still in my answer. So just be careful based on the angle that they give you. Okay, all right, I did the same thing for V. Okay, by looking at the diagram, I can see that the magnitude for V is 2, and I can see that the direction angle is 180 degrees. I plug both of those values into the formulas, and I get that my horizontal component is negative 2, and my vertical component is 0. Okay, now once again, this is another angle that was off the unit circle, so I left it in its exact form. All right, and then the last one that we have on this diagram is W. Okay. From the picture, I can tell that the magnitude of W is 6, and I can see that my direction angle is 280 degrees. So I plug those values into the formulas again. And now 280 degrees is not a standard angle that's on the unit circle. So for this one, I did plug it into the calculator. Okay. So for the horizontal component, I plugged in 6 cosine 280. Make sure that you're in degrees. Okay. And that's how I got my answer. And then I also did the same thing for the vertical component. So I plugged in six sine 280 degrees, and that's how I got the second answer.
Okay, so just be careful. If your direction angle is given to you as one of the standard angles on the unit circle, try to leave the answer in its exact form unless they tell you otherwise. If you don't, if you have been given an angle that's not on the unit circle, then feel free to use your calculator and round to the correct decimal place. Cool.